All right, guys, how you doing? So this is going to be a very quick video comparing auto DNA with car vertical. These are online services which give you car history. Long story short, auto DNA, in my opinion, is far superior to car vertical. Car vertical, it's an expensive service. If you buy two, then it's uh, 20 euros, so 10 euro each. Auto DNA is a 10 euro basic check, and then you, you can pay extra if the uh, if there's a country specific report available so with regards to the basic reports from auto dna i would say that their basic report is better than the car vertical full report to give an example of what i mean this is the basic report from auto dna so it gives you the options that the vehicle had from the factory it'll also give you the code for those options and it also does the same thing for the gearbox code, for example, which is very helpful. Saves you having to dig elsewhere to find out, you know, the specs of the vehicle. Whereas on car vertical, it just gives you this. It just gives you a code one, two, three, four, five, and it just gives you the text. And it doesn't mention anything about the uh, gearbox, for example. It gives you the engine code, to be fair, but it doesn't give you anything about the gearbox code. So this is the options according to car vertical. This is the options according to auto DNA I'm sure you can agree that this is just much more detailed report from more auto DNA it also claims to check uh, 11 databases whereas car vertical only checks nine I'm not sure where the extra two come from but you know more is always better uh, this is what I mean about the details that the uh, uh, auto DNA give you they give you the upholstery code uh, where it was made, the serial number, tire size, all fantastic information, really good. Gearbox uh, code I mentioned, six-speed overdrive. You know, this is information that you don't get in car vertical. So this is why I say even the basic check of auto DNA is better than car vertical. So with regards to the kilometers that they, they check for the basic reports from car vertical and auto DNA, they don't give you a lot of information. But again, auto DNA gives more information. It tells us here that for the vehicle of this age, should be expecting a kilometers around 227,469 kilometers. Car vertical, on the other hand, just gives us this mileage 2003, 10 kilometers. I've got no idea what that means. Doesn't help me at all. And that's the only thing it says about mileage. So. In that respect, it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't tell us anything from my understanding. I don't see anywhere where it says about mileage. So those are the basic reports. Auto DNA, even if you just want the most simple report, I would say auto DNA is better than car vertical. The price is uh, cheaper. The reports on auto DNA are 10 euro and it's only 10 euro on car vertical if you buy two reports at the same time. But what really sets auto DNA apart is that it gives you the option of buying a country specific report if that report is available so in this specific example I went to look at a van and uh, I used auto DNA this is the example that I'm using for this video so I bought the extra Belgium report that auto DNA offered me when I was buying the basic report it tells you buy the basic report and then it gives you the option it says okay there's a Belgian report available if you want to pay extra for it so I said yeah that's an extra 10 euro and this is the gold that it gives you for the report for the Belgian report okay so this is the mileage that I put in this is the mileage that the vehicle had when I saw it that's what the odometer said but the gold from auto DNA it tells me here that the last MOT, well, the last MOT expired in Belgium, 2010, 317. So from that, I went to the MOT history for this vehicle, which is in Greece now. And I saw that the first MOT in Greece was around June, I think, if I, a rough guess, it was around June 2010. And it told me, and it said the kilometers for the first MOT in Greece was around 96,000 kilometers. But here we can see that the mileage recorded during the last inspection in Belgium was 232,409. I think it's fair to say that the clock had been wound back by around uh, 140,000 kilometers. So this fan had around 380,000, which is around 50% more kilometers than what was stated. And the only reason I know this is because of the auto DNA report. It tells me the mileage recorded the last MOT, and it also tells me 
the mileage recorded during the last but one inspection. Now, this could be the MOT in uh, Belgium, but I think it's a law in Belgium that whenever you go to a professional business and have anything done to your car, they record the mileage there. So perhaps this was not the MOT. Perhaps they just went for a repair, a tyres or whatever it may be. And this is why the mileage is so low between the two inspections. But either way, we know now that the uh, the clock has been wound back on this particular van. I had my suspicions when I looked at it. There was many things that hint that said to me that this van has got a lot has got, has not got two hundred thirty nine thousand miles on it. It had a service history from the time it had been in uh, Greece. The same guy had had it. Honestly, the seller, I believe, he thought the van had ninety thousand kilometers when he bought it. But anyway, that's another story. So he had the full history of the car since it's been in Greece because he was the only owner of the uh, van since it's been in Greece. And I was going through in it, looking at the money he'd spent on it. Some of the repairs were quite big. It just said to me that this van has done more than 240,000 kilometers. The stuff that had been done, for example, new cylinder head, tells me, you know, the van has got more, more, more kilometers than that. Uh, the seats, I said to him, the seats look uh, good. And he said, yeah, I've just changed them about a year ago because the previous ones were destroyed. Okay, you know, 10 out of 10 for honesty. I thought they were a bit too uh, nice for the mileage of the van. Um, and then the other little things like the clutch pedal was very worn, which told me that this is, you know, it, the clutch pedal told me 300,000 kilometers plus, basically. So well, combining all that, my suspicions that the mileage was higher, and then doing the auto DNA check basically just confirmed what I, what I thought I was looking at. So I've gone a bit off piece there, guys, about the, the Vivaro that I was looking at. But this video is just to compare the two. So if you're wondering which is the best place to spend your money, where you're going to get the best information, the most information for your money, I would say auto DNA is better even for the most basic check. You get more concise information. Uh, and it also says it searches two other um, databases for stolen vehicles. And if you're just going to buy one report from Car Vertical, the Auto DNA will be cheaper. If Auto DNA give you the option of getting a specific country report as well, I would say it's well worth the money. It's an extra ten euro, but you know, it gives you you know gold here. It gives you the last odometer readings in the country where it was. Even the basic report from auto dna is better than the car vertical if you get the country report it's auto dna is much better than car vertical so that's the video look after yourself and i'll see you again next time Please forgive me.